Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. Ah, research on women's health is in crisis. Women's health is understudied, underfinanced, and plagued by misconceptions. It's an unfortunate reality that leaves many searching for clarity amidst a sea of confusion. In fact, according to a new analysis from the U.S. National Institutes of Health, the NIH, women's health research is hugely underfunded when compared to spending on conditions that affect men. And yet, it seems that when research does finally happen, it often serves to confuse and frighten us. Cardiovascular disease, for example, is the number one killer of women in the USA, but only about a third of participants in clinical trials for new treatments are female. Like, what? What? Why? Today, we're talking about a new piece of research that has just come out and has generated its fair share of concern and media attention, hormone therapy and its potential connection to dementia. A new study out of Denmark has sparked debates and raised lots of questions, further complicating our understanding of hormone therapy, especially because it goes counter to previous studies and has all of us scratching our heads and asking this question, will hormone therapy put women on the fast track to dementia or does it lower the risk for dementia as some earlier studies have shown? Confusing, no? Joining me to shed some light on all of this is Dr. Margaret Noctegal, a leading expert in the field of women's health. She's a board-certified reproductive endocrinologist at NYU Langone Health, co-founder of the North American Menopause Society, which just changed its name to the Menopause Society, medical director of Menopause Cheat Sheet, a newsletter we published together, and a very frequent guest on Gruff Talk. So, before you put that proverbial blanket over your head and stay there because your head is spinning around as much as ours, just chill, grab a cup of tea, and listen to this. Welcome back to Gruff Talk, Dr. Margaret. Thank you. So good to be here, Barbara. So Dr. Margaret, a few weeks ago, a new study came out of Denmark, of all places, that is causing a lot of confusion and concern among women and really also a lot of their healthcare providers. The study itself and the ensuing media coverage has caused women to ask this really important question. Is hormone therapy putting me on the fast track to dementia? Or is hormone therapy helping me to lower my risk for dementia as other studies have shown? So you see, it's very, very confusing. We really want to get to the bottom of this. So we want to kind of cut through some of the confusion and help women have a better understanding of the connection between hormone therapy, menopause, and cognitive functioning, including the risk for dementia. So let's get right to it. So can you give us an overview, Dr. Margaret, of the study that came out and what are some of the highlights and what does it really tell us about that connection? Absolutely. So first, I mean, I think this is a confusing area because there really is no absolute answer yet. The article was an article that came out. It used the Denmark registry of 56,000 Danish women and from the years 2000 to the year 2018, so about an 18-year period. And what it did was it compared patients that were on hormone therapy and not hormone therapy in terms of Alzheimer or other dementia. They found 5,500 women who had dementia. But one of the things that I really want to mention is that this did not take patients and give them estrogen and then look to see if they developed Alzheimer's or dementia. What they did is they looked at patients with dementia and then compared whether they had taken estrogen combined with progesterone or hadn't. And what they saw was that 
in the patients that had taken estrogen and progesterone together, they did see an increase in dementia. And so one of the things that I was hoping that we could do today is to sort of go through a little bit about the study and then try to talk about other studies that have also looked at estrogen and dementia and Alzheimer's because many studies have shown, many excellent controlled studies have shown that estrogen given early within the first five years of menopause actually decreases the onset of Alzheimer's or dementia. So I think that this is a really important topic and hopefully we can talk about it. In terms of the media, I think a lot of people have done a great job of trying to figure out where does this article fit with the other facts that we have about hormone meaning therapy. Meaning the other and studies just, that have come before. Meaning the other mm-hmm. studies, exactly. And just today, there was really an excellent article in the New York Times, in the science section of the New York Times, which looked at this in context with other studies. So I hope we can talk a little bit about that I'll make sure to put a today. link to that article. There usually is a paywall for the New York Times, but great. I'll still add that link as well as links to some other articles that have come out about the study. A few things that have come up, I mean, you know, I'd like you to review some of the weak spots of the study that you and mm-hmm. some of your colleagues mm-hmm. believe it has, mm-hmm. including mm-hmm. it really mm-hmm. is considered an observational study, number one, exactly. right? And also what's, a, I think, concerning to a lot of women and why the media picked up on it so much, because I saw it in a lot of the headlines, is that mm-hmm. this whole issue also happened, apparently, observationally, with younger women, women who were 55 and who were on hormone therapy for a short amount of time. So it wasn't like they were older and on for a long, long time. So I know that was part of the concern for sure. So just tell us a little bit about some of the weak spots in your view. Well, first and foremost, I think just what you said, which is that it's an observational study, which means they're observing rather than doing, and it's not controlled. The ideal study is a study that's randomized, that's controlled, meaning that one group is compared against another group and it's random who's going to get the hormone therapy or whatever we're going to be testing. And then we measure an outcome, but that's not what happened here. Here, we're just observing, which means that it's possible that people had symptoms, symptoms of menopause, such as hot flushes, trouble sleeping, depression. And for that reason, we know that estrogen is very beneficial in being able to alleviate those symptoms. Well, it just so happens that those symptoms by themselves have been associated with an increase in dementia and Alzheimer's. So it's possible that the reason that they saw this association, recognize they see an association, But even the people that wrote the article did not say that this shows any causation. They just said that there was this association. So what's possible is that the reason that that association existed was because patients with those symptoms can develop an increase in dementia and Griggs in Alzheimer's. And those were the ones that received the hormone. And it's possible that receiving those hormones was at a time perhaps that was later than the than the hot flushes and the insomnia and the dementia had already been causative of dementia and Alzheimer's. So we can't say that that there is any cause to that. In fact, in the New York Times article, Dr. Moscone is is um, quoted in showing a, that for those of you who may not be familiar with Dr. Moscone's work. She did a terrific TED Talk a few years ago about brain health and menopause and and drops in estrogen. Really excellent. I'll add, thank you for reminding me, Dr. Margaret. I'll Mm -hmm. make sure and add Mm -hmm. a link to that. But she does research in brain health. And she had mentioned that hot flushes have been associated with hyperintensities in the brain and that that can be a sign of dementia or of other neurogenic diseases. So 
What we don't know now is, are there the symptoms that is the increase in dementia or is it a treatment that is the cause? So I think that is one big thing, which is that the study was not a control right. study. And I think it is important to mention that there are controlled studies, such as the WHI, which did show, and that is a controlled study, you know, of many women. And what it did show is that when hormone therapy was initiated and started within the first five or even the first 10 years, that there was a beneficial effect and that there was a lower incidence of dementia and Alzheimer's. So I think that's very important and makes sense. Also, there are other studies. There is a study that was also quoted by Dr. Moscone that showed that was observational, but it did look at 380,000 patients and it showed a protective effect. So when we look at these studies, we have to take many of them into context, I think. And then there was a very nice study looking at a lot of different studies together. And it showed that when hormone therapy was initiated early, there was a protective effect. And when we wait and it's initiated later than 10 Mm -hmm. years, there was a detrimental Mm -hmm. effect. What you and I often call when you've been on the show before talking about all of this and so much more, we often call that the window of opportunity. You do, it's not infinite. It is finite. It's not infinite. It is not. And uh, and that's important to note. And then I think another thing that's really important about this particular study is that from what I understand from the study, it looked at combination of estrogen plus a specific type of synthetic progesterone. And so it did not look at estrogen alone. So it really can't talk about estrogen and its effect because this is estrogen combined with this synthetic progesterone, which we really try not to use so much right now. And also, it's lumping all, you know, we don't know which types, what doses they were using. It was over 18 years. So what was started 18 years ago may be very different from what we're prescribing right now. And also, when we talk about estrogen and an estrogen now, we know we have so many options. We have oral estrogen. We have transdermal estrogen through the skin, patches, creams, gels, and they're all sorts of different doses. So I think there's a lot here that it's something to think about. And it definitely makes us think about what we want to do for more studies. But I think one thing that I would take from yes, it what would is you, I think from that's today's what we are now getting well, to what, what do we want to tell women who are listening in right now and are confused and also concerned? I mean, maybe they were on hormone therapy and maybe aren't anymore and are worried, gee, am I now on a fast track to dementia? It's a big (laughs) concern for a lot of people. I definitely don't think that's Mm -hmm. the case. I mean, if you look at studies that are done on estrogen and especially in cell culture and in the lab, Mm -hmm. we have recently had some great studies that show that estrogen prevents tau protein. And we know that tau protein is important for the development of Alzheimer's. So estrogen prevents tau protein from phosphorylating, which means it's not making its tangles. And it's the tangles that increase the likelihood of Alzheimer's. So if estrogen is decreasing the tangles, it's decreasing Alzheimer's. So it certainly makes sense that it would be beneficial. It makes sense that it would decrease Alzheimer and decrease dementia. And then, of course, we have those controlled studies that are representing and showing that. And Dr. Fabian, who's the medical director for the Menopause Society, she says we shouldn't change our practice based on this article. It makes it very clear that there are many factors that are involved for the things that we just talked about. It's not controlled. We don't have the dose. We don't know the delivery system. It's a combination of a estrogen plus synthetic progesterone. So I think that would be what I would say is that we shouldn't change our practice, that it's so important for everyone who is experiencing menopause to look at it for themselves. What are their personal risks? What are the personal advantages? Do they have a family history? You know, so I think that's 
always the message. And then I think the other message is that the symptoms alone of hot flushes, insomnia, depression, these are all symptoms that may increase the risk of dementia or Alzheimer's. So if you have those symptoms, one, I do think it's beneficial right. to get them treated just for the symptoms, but also do other things that can also decrease the onset of dementia, whether it's getting daily exercise, not smoking, walking, getting adequate sleep, doing all the eating Managing well, stress, doing all the thing. other things that we want mm -hmm. to do and take that into consideration. So I think Healthy living is very important. I think that this is an interesting study, and it certainly got a lot of people talking about menopause, which is probably a good it's thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yes, and it highlighted the fact that symptoms are important, not only because they're disruptive, but also because they may have serious ramifications in terms of our brain chemistry, heart chemistry, and other parts of our life. So I think that's really good to recognize. And so I think it was, it really served a good purpose. And it also teaches us that any study that comes out, that we have to look at how the study was done, what are they looking at? And then that stems more research. Correct. And as we know, mm -hmm. women's health uh, research is woefully underfunded. And uh, we really need to make a change with that. And I think that that will help in so many areas of women's health across the board. I mean, an example I gave in the intro is that a recent study showed that I think only about a third of people who are involved in uh, heart health studies, cardiovascular disease studies, are women and the rest are men. And even though cardiovascular disease is still the number one killer of women. So there's a lot that has to change in general. And you're right. You made a very important point. The fact that once again, a little spotlight has been placed on menopause and hormone therapy, which we think is a great thing. We want more discussion about it. And if this helps, great. But I just am hoping, and I really think if people listen to you in this episode, they won't be as concerned, but I'm really concerned myself that people will be confused and worried and may like backpedal a bit on their mm -hmm. openness about hormone therapy, which has so many benefits, as you pointed out. Well, I think that we point out regularly that yes, it does have benefits for the right person, yes. but it also has risks for some mm -hmm. people. So I think the message always comes down to it's an individual right. decision and making an individual decision for, you know, so it's, it's not as though one thing is good and one thing is bad. It's that this is available and it might be right for you and it might be beneficial for you, but it also might not be. And if it is beneficial, how should I take it? Should I take it by mouth? Should I take it in a patch? Should I take it in a gel? Do I need progesterone? Because if you have a uterus, you have to have some progesterone to balance the estrogen. And so all of these factors are so important and hormone therapy is a great tool. It's something that it's we have. Tool. It's an agent that we can use, but it's not right for everybody. So I think that it is always going to be a conversation. It's always going to be a conversation. You're right, especially as more and new research does come out. You know, we did do an episode on brain health a while back, and I'm going to post yes. the link to that. I hope everyone listens to it because that will delve much more deeply into some of those other studies because this study had not yet come out about all the, right. you know, the benefits and the connection between estrogen and hormone therapy and brain health and right. how we're looking forward with a future research. So I'll make sure to post right. that. And Dr. Margaret, thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy day, as you always do, to kind of shed light on these big topics and explain things to us in layman terms that we can all understand. And we really appreciate you. My pleasure. So fun to be here. Always good to talk with I you. 
And I look forward to our yeah, next you'll be back soon. conversation. We have a lot of yeah, things to talk absolutely. about. Great. Great. Thank great, you. Great, great. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Gruff Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Gruff Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.